Hello, everybody. You are watching Pinche's Lowriders. See if uh, anybody gets on here. Good morning. Give me a second. Three people so far. Good morning. Happy Valentine's Day. Remember, pop in the live chat so I can. Uh, you guys hear me loud and clear. time I create post. Just trying to share the link for the live. It's live, 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 live. Good morning, good morning, good morning. So, how many of you actually watched that that uh, Super Bowl halftime show? All right. Good morning. So, hold on one second. Yeah, there was a, so after the, the halftime show, you know, and then I didn't actually catch it when I was watching it. Um, but then my homeboy was here and he's seen, he's out there dancing on the hoods of the car. And I was like, well, why the hell would they do that? And then you realize that it wasn't just one person. It was all three cars. And so it took me a minute to like digest like where were they standing on it you know where was it was it the fender or the hood and then uh you know then i'm like oh they just they just made fake hoods they put uh re you know they just did a reinforced hood I mean, my son was here uh my my homeboy was here and he was like oh yeah yeah you know they probably did so then like literally as i open up social media after I just made that statement, the whole everybody in the lowrider car community was fucking talking big shit about it. them dancing on the hoods of the cars and there was memes popping up. The rest of the football game, that's the whole my whole entire social media feed was everything about um everything about the the people dancing on the hoods of the cars you know it, and and the thing is is you know so then you find out so it was uh the kings of chevy and they built reinforced I mean, he had to watch. He had to do like two lives to address everybody run, yapping and running their mouth and crying about it. And but he 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 did two lives and they talked about it. And, you know, like I said, that's their business. But at the same time, you know, they got paid whatever may be. The assumption is whatever amount they got paid is their business. And, and, and the thing is, is they showed there's pictures, everything they bought. They bought aftermarket repop hoods they they reinforced them and everything so that they can be stood on and danced on it was part of the show it was part of everything they had a, obviously they had knowledge of it because they had to build these cu custom hoods for these cars very specifically for the super bowl halftime show specifically so people can stand on them and dance 
So there's that. I see so many people that's disrespectful. It's disrespectful. Oh, no, the kids are going to think it's okay. But I mean, like if you go to a hop and cars hop and you're destroying Impalas and and G bodies and you know Monte Carlos and stuff like that. Everybody knows that a high, uh, a car that has hydraulics in it is devalued because you're cutting into the frame. I mean, the whole concept of lowriders is every pretty much racial stereotype or people that will try to validate uh why low riding is trash in the col- in the culture is always going to sit there and go you know they're just destroying cars and yet you got low riders complaining not thinking they're just watching the super bowl thinking oh my god you know who would i would i would i would kick that person's ass this and that blah 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 dude it's part of the show there was nobody that stupid. My second cup of coffee. <clears throat> there was nobody that stupid to just jump on those cars. And on top of that, you have, then everybody's like, well, why did they hit switches? And OG, from the car owner from the, the 62, you know, he said it best because he's the one is, that they did the lies with. And the lives, his lives to address everybody talking. But you got to remember, these are billionaires that throw this Super Bowl that own these football teams. And just imagine what would happen if they go on the field, hitting switches, messing up the field in any type of way with them tires bouncing or rubbing or leaving marks um, and or, you know, digging divots or pits in holes in 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 that turf and one of those football players fucking breaks his ankle or leg in the middle of this fucking super bowl and what the fuck you think will happen with these people with this kind of money and how it would turn on everybody like at the end of the day it was what it was and it's the show that we got and it was pretty good I mean, I, I actually was expecting them, like, I was expecting all the artists to, like, roll in in the cars and then, then get out and do their thing. That's what I was expecting. And it and that didn't even happen. <clears throat> and I had said this in another, another live uh, on my Instagram, but, um, you know, one of the things was is that I saw, you know, you, you saw the buildings. There was some, you know, the, one of the announcers saying, oh, it's about to start. They're coming on the field. And they, you know, they showed the little stage thing that they had, the houses or whatever. And then, like, you could saw, saw that the cars were already there. I saw, like, a, a reflection of the chrome. And uh, I was like, oh, okay. Well, they're already there. I was expecting them to, you know, at least roll up, you know, and park and then just get out. But they didn't even do that. So it is what it is. You know, I mean, everybody's going to critique it, but it's still considered. And to, I mean, for the most part, anybody that not was not worried about the people dancing on the hoods of the car is considered one of the most, or probably one of the best Super Bowl halftime show. It was uh, censored, uh, no bad languages, nobody losing, um, you know, no wardrobe malfunctions. Mary J. Blige, she looked great. Um, yeah, she was great, but. You know, it's just one of those things. Everybody's perspective on things, and and at the end of the day, they just it's hopefully it brings a little bit of positive, you know, outlook to the lowrider community. I mean, have you guys even remember that there was a movie? I don't know if it was like Bring It On, like twenty or some shit, where they had all these lowriders and they were dancing on them and they were hopping and they were standing on them and the cars were hopping and they were while they were standing on them. And this was all done fake. You know, it was cars. They had they had these cable pulleys that they were mounted to the ground to the car to make it hop. They pulled the back end off of it down with the cable and it made the car go up. And then they were actually 
wearing harnesses that that locked them to the car. So when the car went up in the air, they were standing on it and they were dancing. It was a it was a movie. <clears throat> you could look it up on YouTube. Um, and they show all this shit. And it and it's a corny ass movie. There was not one of those people were fucking Chicanos um or black that I remember. I, I haven't seen that that cut from that making of that movie for a while, but uh it was, you know, like a dance movie. And um and nobody really complained about that. So yeah, it is what it is. So yeah, happy Valentine's Day uh to everybody, you know, out there. Um I have a TikTok and if you haven't or if you're if you do have a TikTok or you're into a TikTok, into TikTok, um go give me a follow. It's Lowrider Lobo. Uh Features Lowriders was just like too big of a name and I wanted other people to respond to me a little better. So it is my TikTok and uh but I put a TikTok today about Valentine's Day and I'm single and I don't have a Valentine. It's not skinny. But actually it was more about um falling in love with low writing. So since today is Valentine's Day, and if you watch this um video in the comments, not just the live chat, but if you're watching this later on today or whatever, um give me a uh you know a comment and tell me how you fell in love with low writing. Um, you know, what, what made you, uh, or what opened your eyes or what caught your attention of low riding and how it progressed to you be interested in, in this car culture, because I'm going to put my phone on silent. Sorry. Um, and I tell, I've told this story before, but it's been a while since you, uh, on YouTube, but when I was a kid, my mom we went to we're in San Jose, San Jose, California, and it was Cinco de Mile. And we used to go to the Cinco de Mile Festival downtown. And if you ever know anything about San Jose, California, we had one of the biggest Cinco de Mile festivals in the nation, even bigger than L.A. Um, it was crazy. I mean, it was like every fucking... 15 feet, there was like five probation officers, parole officers, FBI agents, cops, you name it, in the crowd and everything else like that. But anyhow, we go, we eat, we walk around, there's, you know, music, everybody's there. Um, I was a little kid, I don't even remember, probably about six or seven. Um, And then we left, and I just, you know, mind you, I, I'm oblivious to everything other than knowing that this is this thing we go to, and I have to, like, stay close to my mom, this it's shoulder to shoulder people. Um, I'm holding, I have my hand in my mom's pocket uh, and walking around like that. I have to, that, that was my crowd control thing. It was so packed and I, I did just be sitting there and I, and I have to hold on like that or my mom's loop on her jeans and I was just holding on and walking with her because it was just so packed with people. Anyway, so we end up leaving, we get to the car or whatever. And my mom at the time, so she had this like, powder blue baby blue um um it's a it was a dotson hatchback okay um you know it was like a modern um uh, pinto kind of thing but if you remember what those I, I, I don't remember the year but it was uh and we don't have i don't have any pictures of it but um it was a dotson hatchback and so it was hot and you got to remember not all the cars came with AC back then and it was really hot. And I just remember my mom let me sit in the trunk or the hat of the, where the hatchbacks at and the hatchbacks open. But we all know back in the day, there wasn't no seatbelt laws and shit like that. And, um, I'm sitting in the back of this car and we're in traffic. All I know is we're in traffic, right? But it's pretty much cruising because it's a single mile but it's traffic and we're trying to go home and we're driving the long way, of course, well, right down Santa Clara street. And so I'm sitting there and I'm there and my mom's friend, there's a, it's, it was either 63 or 64. And I know it was red. Um, 
And it was behind, right behind us, like right there. And my mom's friend says that, you know, those cars can go up and down. I'm like, what? Like, whatever. I'm oblivious to what you're trying to tell me. And then, so yeah, it has like hydraulics. It can, it can make it go up and down. So then she motions the car to go up and down like that. And then the car starts, you know, doing, hitting switches. And so mine, this is the 80s, um, very early 80s. Um, and that was my first real experience of the lowriders. And after that, um, and it was funny because the dot, my mom, I always say the car because it was a Datsun, but my mom had spoke hubcaps on it. And um, for the OGs out there, my mom had bought these hubcaps and they're kind of, kind of reminiscent, you know, reminds me of them is those, those crazy Texas folks. So just imagine there are these steel wire wheels, hubcaps, and they, they kind of pop out like about that much. Right. They're not they're not not the flat ones. They're not like the ones on the Regals. You know, they're not the ones on the cutlasses, the, the stock hubcaps. But they're these like aftermarket hubcaps and they pop up about this much and, they, and you kick them on, you know, they pop them onto the rim and sit in the rim, but they're just thick. They're pretty thick. About they're probably about as thick as like uh some true spoke uh spokes. And and that's how she drove that car. You know, whatever. I don't know. But um you know, that was that was a really fun memory for me. And I can say that's probably my first real experience with a lowrider. And from then, when I was a teenager, I picked up a lowrider magazine and, you know, I pretty much fell in love with it. And there's I have some old pictures probably put away somewhere where I have um my whole lower collection, like I even bought the the magazine um, plastic and I used to hang them on my wall and I was starting to collect one, two, you know, all the way across and then it filled up my other wall. And then, and then later on, um, you know, different magazines, you had Orleys, you had uh, Street Customs, you know, obviously, you know, Street Low, Low Rider, you know, all that. I even had, um, oh, what's the name of it? There was another magazine from the East Coast. I have those too. Um, and uh, so anyhow, I had this big old collection and I had to get like a chest to put all my, and I have it, I have it in my closet. It's the heaviest fucking thing I have, period. <laughs> I have to take, to move, I can't move it by myself, literally. I cannot, unless I have a dolly, you know, or I take stuff out of it. And, um, but then eventually, like I took the centerfolds out, and I took the uh, the centerfolds out of the lowrider magazines, and I and I went and got poster board, and I, and I mounted it to the poster board, and I had them mounted on my, I put those on my wall, and I I had like, um, and when I was a kid, I used to build models, scale models of cars and stuff, and so I and I did I did helicopters and planes, I had an eight ten warthog, all that stuff. And I would have, I, what I did was, is I took uh, those round screws with the round eye, eyelid things or whatever they call them. And I put them in the ceiling. And then I ran fishing line in different directions on my ceiling. And that's where I, what I did was then I mount, then I hung my models of the, I had the Blue Thunder. I had uh, a couple different, another helicopter. Um, that, and then I had the, the A10 and I think whatever, but those are all scale models that I had built and I put them and I hung them from my ceiling and I had a, a shelf with cars on it that I built and Porsches and Ferraris, Bigfoot, you know, and uh, I had an Impala and uh, all those things. So I had all that stuff and, and I think about it now because I, I, I go back and I look about, you know, I think about all those things. I, I never thought I'd be where I'm at doing this YouTube and, and um, you know, having the love, going to the car shows, traveling, being a photographer, um, you know, being known for what I'm doing right now. And it's pretty cool. You know, it's a good feeling. Yeah. This ain't my, my nine to five and, and it doesn't pay all my bills. It doesn't, I'm not rich. Um, 
but it still it still means a lot because I honestly would never have thought, you know, that I would be where I'm at right now, you know, and and it's a good feeling. So, you know, that's my experience. That's my love for low riding. You know, in general, I've always supported it, loved it. I I I've seen people and getting back to, you know, people complaining oh there's there was no chicanos in the super bowl well low riding to me low riding is its own culture and whether you're mexican you're look at if you're an american from mexican descent or american from african descent or chinese descent or european descent and you're a low rider you're a low rider period period and the people that love low riding and stuff like that, that is the culture. It's not a, there's not a race involved. You can sit there and say, we could argue who started it. We can argue who did the first hydraulics. We can argue who's this and who's that. But the car culture is the car culture. One of the only car cultures that welcomes anybody to their events that, you know, um, doesn't judge the cars. We've all know about, you know, hot rod shows where they're like, well, no low riders, no spot. I I literally remember seeing, um, you know, uh, car um, events where they specifically say, oh, no spoke wheels. And I'm talking about like within the last 10, 15 years, you know, they're like, no spoke wheels, no, no, none, none of these cars, you know, uh, stuff like that. I've seen where they've had car cultures and people hit the switches and then people go up to, we don't do that here. Uh, yeah. Okay, buddy. So, you know, as, as that, for that being said, you know, like I said, at the end of the day, it, the car culture is a car culture. Low riding is a car culture and it's a unity amongst people. And you have to really accept that we, we don't sit there and tell people they can't have this and they can't have that when they come. We welcome one of the most welcoming car cultures there is, is low riding. You have a diversity diversified by the Chicanos, by blacks. There's people in here that are white. There's people that are here that are, uh, you know, Chinese, Japanese, whatever it may be different cultures. I, I know people, you know, uh, Fijian. I know, I know people that are, and I don't even know if that's the proper term. I, I'm sorry, but are, you know, I know people that are, um, you know, East middle Eastern that, that have low riders and nobody cares to be honest with you. They, they, they care about the car and, you know, they care about how clean it is and, and, and everything like that. And that's the low rider culture. So let's keep it about that, you know, because, at the end of the day, yeah, I'm pinches lowriders and it's in Spanish, but I don't even speak fucking Spanish. It was just, it was catchy and it worked and it's worked way better than I, you know, than I expected, but it, it is what it is. And it's just the God's honest truth. That's how much I love lowriding. I don't see, um, I don't see the color lines. What I see is, um, people that grew up and grew out of the bullshit, you know, um, I've, I've tried to explain a lot of people that low riding is, is a higher level than being a gangbanger and, or, you know, um, it's just, it's, it's a level of life where people have to have some responsibility involved because it ain't cheap and it's not for, we all know we don't like the troublemakers. I mean, everybody that loves low riding, you know that you can't stand the people that always want to fight, that are always too drunk, that are stealing and, and all other stuff. I mean, it's still there, but it's not like it used to be. In the 90s, gang, bang, gang banging and low riding were intertwined, but they weren't the same. It's just that the, the, level, the lines were crossed. And, you know, and then you still see people that don't know how to act and stuff like that but you know that's a that's a people problem more than it is anything else there's etiquette involved you know and 
you know, egos and everything else like that. And people just don't want to chill out because there's more than ever people have their kids and everything. So, you know, the lowriders in the, the attention, even though it's all worried about standing on the hood of the cars, it just brings another discussion. Now you can tell your kid, well, this, those hoods were specially made. You don't ever do that. That's disrespectful to you. Some to anybody else's car. We all know you don't lean on people's cars. You don't touch fucking people's cars. I don't put models on cars unless I have permission. Um, you know, I have people that I am like, I can't, you know, you stand in front of it and you stand by it, but I'm not going to, you know, unless someone comes and says you can do, you know, whatever you need to do. And then that comes with the responsibility of me um, guiding the model, knowing what's, what is realistic and what is absurd and what is would damage a car. You know, that's a big thing that you have to have a level of knowledge of what makes sense. I've seen models with heels and she actually posted the picture yesterday, last night, but, uh, she used the model and I remember being at an event and the guy goes, I want you to stand over here on my hood with the heels on. And she's like, what? And he's like, yeah, yeah. I want to, I want a picture of you on the hood. It was a bomb. And, um, and everybody's like, what the fuck? And then people were talking shit. But he specifically asked her, and he wanted her to heal. But the way he had her stand was like on like the very end of the hood. But he's like, I ain't tripping. This car's going to go get painted. So he was like, you know, go ahead and do the picture. It's no big deal because I'm going to send it in to get painted and, you know, all the body work and paint. So she was very careful. And we got the picture. And she wasn't jumping around on it. She just you know, stood up there and, you know, and, but there was a lot of hate behind it. And, and I get that. Like I said, if you don't have permission and the owner, then yeah, you're, that's not, that's not cool at all. But now you bring up, you know, like I said, people sit there and whining about how disrespectful it is. It, it's only disrespectful if you're touching someone else's car, don't fucking belong to you and without permission. So the owners of these cars, they gave they, they they knew exactly what was going on because they built the hoods for them to do it. So everybody's having fucking heart attacks, but yet at the same time it's okay to fucking you know back bumper a fucking Impala on a fucking at a hop. Like you know, uh, at the end of the day, you know it, it is what it is. You know, three wheeling, you twist up somebody's frame real fucking quick. You know, all these things that we see. And the Lord again come with consequences, wear and tear with a car. You know, I know, like I said, you know, people that have cars that they baby the shit out of them and they don't do anything. And, you know, they barely, if you're, you know, and, and that's understandable. That's your car. It's your level of comfort. You know what I mean? I used to like, say like, if you go to like, look at good example, high class. Okay. I've been out on their cruises and stuff and these guys have full fucking chrome undies paint graphics gold leaf silver leaf fucking interior rims you know engraved every fucking thing and they're out there hopping their cars they're three-wheeling their fucking cars they're they're out there working their fucking switches and in some places people are like oh my god that's a show car i couldn't take it out there without a trailer and you know it's your perspective they build their cars and play with them yeah, that's a lot of money involved, but that's their business. That's their car. That's what they do. That's why, you know, certain clubs, they stand out because they ain't scared to put their cars and, and not just cruise them, but play with them. So, you know, like I said, it's everybody's perspective. If you don't have the money to keep fixing your car, of course, then that's your choice not to do all that stuff. Ain't no one telling you you have to. That's the thing. Let me see some of these comments here. Lobo. No, they weren't those kind of spoke up caps. 
they, these 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 were some crazy ass thick ones. They 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 were not even. They were straight up aftermarket, and uh, I had re I had Regal hubcaps on my Impala when I had stocks, uh, when I had my in seventy seven Impala. Yeah, I mean, it, well, the Super Bowl, what you got to remember, Mr. Cartoon was the Chicano. He he did the he, Pepsi Lowrider 67 convertible, and he did that commercial. I didn't even see it being played at the at the Super Bowl on, you know, on TV, but it's it's out there on in, in the internet and everything. The so you know that's Mr. Cartoon right there. Boom. Yeah, the funny, you know, the funny thing is, is like I said, I was just reading, reading the comments as well. But um, you know, it's like, <clears throat> you know, people are, oh, it's disrespectful. Yeah, okay, because you probably do way more disrespectful things. You know, I mean, it's like, you know, it just. It's it's funny. It's like the it's you know it's like the whole fucking Chihuahua for Taco Bell. It's disrespectful. I, I'm not. They use the ch uh, Chihuahua to represent a Mexican. Uh, bruh, come on now. <clears throat> I'm sorry, you're rich Mexican. Okay, the people that complained and sued, yeah, they were like rich fucking people. That's not representative of my culture. Okay. What makes a car a lowrider? Lowering it. I mean, it's more, it's it's all around your, it could be a stock car, but if it's a clean car, if it spoke rims, if you have the paint jobs, I mean, you can add a chain steering wheel, it's all low riding and it's all on the level you have for your budget and your comfort. The thing is, is that if you take your car to low rider events, if you take your car on low rider cruising, you go to car shows that are all low rider, you're a low rider, buddy. That's what makes a car low rider. Yeah, I need to make more mugs. People have been asking me. I got to When I make some more, I'll tell you. I usually sell them for like 15 bucks. My coffee's cold now. These are 15 ounce mugs. So I might make some more. It's cold. Well, not cold, but it's not hot. Yeah. <sighs> Well, yeah, but like I said, I also said that those hoods that were in the halftime show were bought aftermarket and welded reinforced steel in them just for them to dance. So to them, and I've watched, you know, someone told me who they were. I, I wasn't following them before, but if you go to my Instagram, I have reposted, um, you know, the lives where he's addressing the fact everybody's crying about the hoods. Um, and, uh, you know, they got paid to have their cars there and I'm just saying rumor has it. I don't know. So I, I, I've been seeing the number of people saying they got paid 50 K a car. So, and that was to build the hood. They had, a, they went and built the hoods for the car. They got aftermarket hoods. They fucking reinforced them, designed them so that someone can stand on them. And then put them on the car so that they could do that at the show. It wasn't something that was not, like, they knew about it way ahead of time. So there's really no damage. At the end of the day, they could pull those hoods off and fucking sell them for a shit ton of money. 
because they were in the Super Bowl and you know say these are the hoods that everybody was fucking whining about because they were dancing on them and they're gonna make money more money selling them on top of now their value of their car was in the Super Bowl show uh, halftime show and they they don't lose nothing they've only gained they got paid to do it they could sell the hoods they can keep the hood they get they, can, they don't even you know they're probably not going to sell their cars don't I, I doubt that they're going to even fucking do that but one day you know things may change and they'll have that and guess what they come up and i think a lot a lot of times too it's more of jealousy it's like you know i'm i you know people are just like you know the the, the value everything just went up everybody else's shit just went down and you know or the whatever and i always see complaining it's like when all the cars in the last couple of years started selling for 150 200 000, and people are crying about it and i'm like dude if you don't got the money to pay that but i mean yeah it took you 10 years to, oh built not bought but i see people build a car take five years to build it and turn around and fucking sell it in a fucking heartbeat it doesn't matter. I mean, like I said, the car, the car could be a, for you, you know, meaningful and stuff like that, and you don't want to sell it. But it takes you ten years to restore it and build it the way you want. And then guess what? It's it's a hundred and fifty, two hundred thousand dollar car because of the money you put in, the the labor and everything else like that. And I mean, you're not gonna sell it for fucking thirteen grand, which was the sticker fucking price in nineteen sixty four. I mean, what? I mean, come on. Stop whining about other people getting things done. I mean, it, it's it's their prerogative, and that's the whole catch. You know, if they're not hurting you, if they're not directly hurting you and taking business out of your hand or anything like that, then you should be all for it. Because once again, I mean, there's people that think that low riding is like the lowest of low in the automotive culture. But then when they start finding out how some of these cars are, what kind of fucking prices these cars are going for, that, that you got to remember, these guys have a $80,000 fucking BMW that they're, that they have a fucking lease or a fucking, a payment, the, the bank really, the one that own it, and they're paying $600, $700 a month for this car. And in five years, when their loans paid off, the car is worth shit. So you got to understand that like these are people that look down on low riding and then they find out that these cars are hundred thousand dollar cars that are sixty thousand dollar cars they're seventy thousand dollar cars and then and then some of these people that are buying these cars are buying them outright so they're not paying payment see you got to understand it they're not paying the lease they're not paying the bank uh for the lowriders and I, and I see people complaining and talking shit oh bank owned this that so they pulled a loan maybe they fucking retired some of these people retired from their job because of covid they pulled all their fucking money and they said fuck it i'm buying me a lowrider cuz i always want I always wanted one fuck it life's too short my son in the background i see you pop but he has a day off today so i got an extra day with him but anyhow like i said Keep things positive. You know what? Don't hit, play or hate. Congratulate. You know what I mean? That's how I see it. I, 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 I show mad love and respect to people that have the money to create some of these masterpieces and these cars. I mean, it could be my dream car. It's, it's just I look and I'm like at awe. And you know what? I don't knock these people. I don't knock these people for having the money to do it. I don't knock the people for having something that I can't have right now. I just do what I do and I do my part. That's my my media. I do videos and everything like that. You know, um, we're at different levels. You know, some photographers they have ten thousand dollar cameras. I have like a mid range camera, a couple thousand dollars, but I have like a shit ton of equipment. So it's like I have thousands of dollars invested in my equipment. And then I know photographers that you know they bought their stuff at a pawn shop or it was hand me down or it's used and they buy everything used and they're really good photographers and they're not bad photographers. And it doesn't mean that the, the reality is you, it's your eye. I know people that use their fucking phone for everything, you know, and they, they do badass shit. They do boss level shit. There's, it's just levels to the thing. There's preferences to everything. 
and you just gotta learn that it is what it is and enjoy your life plain and simple no they built the hood they built a completely separate hood and put it on there Yeah, exactly. The hoods, they went, they bought aftermarket hoods, welded them all up, extra steel, reinforcement, and then they color matched them to the car. And then they took the original Chevy hoods that belonged to the car off and they put the other hood on and then they took it to the Super Bowl and let people dance on it. They ain't getting a full paint job. They got paid ahead of time to create the falsehood and to be in the show. Plain and simple. You know, so, but honestly, that it was just, I couldn't believe the whole fucking thing. I expected something different. I expected, you know, just people talk about the show or whatever. But at the end of the day, the whole focus of everything on social media was people dancing on the hood. So if you just chimed in, you know, come back and watch the whole thing and all that. Anything lowrider motors, uh, dude. I've seen fucking Corvettes painted like a lowrider. I've seen those little cube cars painted like a lowrider. VWs completely lowridered out. Motorcycles lowridered out. I've seen, of, of course, bikes. What's my take? Anything lowrider is fucking great. I've seen cars that have no affiliation ever with lowrider being painted with a fucking multi painted. Uh, pattern out fucking paint job straight low rider there's a, a uh one guy he brought it out in san jose is old school he has a fucking porsche it's a porsche candy paint multicolor paint fucking big old speaker system in the back porsche low rider with spokes it doesn't matter I've, I've seen fucking camaros old school camaros on spokes laid out i've seen a fucking uh a stingray corvette the gold one i think it was a picture it was on the internet Fucking low rider out. Spokes laid out. It's low rider. When people started low riding 57 Chevys, people were shitting themselves because of, it was such a fucking classic, iconic fucking muscle car, hot rod. 57 Chevy, you know, and, and, and the other car cultures. And people were like, oh my God, they're low riding 57 Chevys. And they're one of the fucking hottest looking fucking cars out right now when, when people low riding the shit out of them. So, you know, oh, oh and the BMW, um, Mercedes, the old school fucking Mercedes, they, they get laid out and fucking low rided. And in Europe, they're fucking bad. So a low rider is a low rider. And it's, and it's here. It's some, you know, it is in your heart. Low riding is, is more than just the car. It's the person. Because actually, that's where it started. It's, low riders were the people. But yeah, but anyways, I'm gonna let you guys go. Happy Valentine's Day. You know, enjoy your chocolates and your flowers or your alone time. Either way, you know, uh, today I choose to focus my Valentine's love on lowriders. But yeah, anyways, um, love thyself. Love everybody that you love. Um, Valentine's Day is just not one day. Um, if you love somebody, it's never just one day. Appreciate everything uh, and everybody for tuning in, for people that are following, subscribing, sharing. Uh, thank you, and I appreciate that. Um, this weekend, I was going to go to Frank's after uh, Frank's Hop, but I'm not going to make it to, to Arizona after all. But there is a cruise night here in San Jose on Saturday. Starts at 3. I will be out there getting footage and photos, and we'll have some new video soon. Once again, thank you guys all for your support and um, yeah, have a good day.